That's a very yeah. interesting topic, though, Jordan. Because once again, you can relate that. We could we could begin to uh, discuss a little astrology in relation of to that. Uh, yeah, that's where I was going with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, throw this out there for the audience, but uh, you know, there's in astrology, it's said conventionally that Taurus rules money. Taurus, dignified ruler of Taurus is Venus. The exalted ruler of Taurus is the Moon. But I'm of the opinion, Cancer rules money. And I'm. This is where I see the connection to this thing called religion. Just take the word money, put an extra O in the word money. Not too far away from the word Mooney. That's right. So I think the moon has something to do with money. But when you look at Cancer, so I say Cancer rules money, not Taurus. Taurus has a connection to money because of the moon being exalted in Taurus. But I really think it's Cancer which is ruled by the moon, and the moon has something to do with money, money, moony. Maybe it's a loose etymology, but that even being said, when you look at the constellation of Cancer, because I do not like astrological signs. I like with the stars. I don't like these man-made projections called astrological signs, these man-made concoctions. I like the actual thing that the universe put there, the stars. So when you look at Cancer, the dignified ruler is, is the moon, and then the two exalted rulers of cancer, and we're asserting here that cancer has a connection to money, uh, are Neptune and Jupiter. And Neptune has an awful lot to do with religion. So, because Neptune is also the ruler of the constellation of Pisces. So, yeah, it's, whenever you're talking about this thing called religion, I mean, you're, you're going beyond things that are, are, are not logical. You're in the realm of Neptune. You're in the realm of Jupiter. You're in the realm of the moon. You're in a realm that has to do with people's subconscious desires, the realm of dreams, the realm, right. the realms of the... Uh, that's just what you're dealing with when you're dealing with money. So it's no surprise from when you're seeing things from a rational, logical vantage point that it looks absolutely insane. But then again, one could say, a Pablo Picasso painting, he's in the realm of Pisces, which is ruled by Neptune. Uh, if we were in the realm of Virgo, which is opposite Pisces, Virgo is the doctor. Virgo's exalted and dignified ruler is Mercury. So when you're in the realm of the doctor, physiologically, P Pica Pablo Picasso's paintings make no sense. They make no sense. The woman's got half a square head, half a green face, one arm's a tr cube, another arm's a triangle. It's the body's contorted in weird poses. Physiologically, yep. to, a, to a doctor, that's a nightmare. But from a Piscean, Neptunian point of view, you're in a realm that's not logical. And I think, just from the vantage point of the stars, this is what you're getting into when you're getting into the realm of religion. The more lunacy, the crazier the idea, the more money that's going to come flooding in. <laughs> that's right. And, and, and then the, uh, and, uh, Neptune, the god Neptune has a trident. Is that, is, uh, am I thinking correctly? That's that? absolutely correct. That's the symbol, okay, that's well, the that's astrological symbol for Neptune, too. It's a trident with a cross on the bottom. That's right. Well, the trident is actually the, 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 uh, the spear or the, uh, what am I trying to say, the, the fork of Satan, the devil's, uh, what do we call it? You know, the trident of the, the devil has. His the staff. The devil's pitchfork. His, his pitch pitchfork. Yeah, his staff. Yeah. Yeah, it's the staff on the pitchfork of the devil. That's uh, where I was looking for, the pitchfork. The pitchfork of the devil. Every time you see Satan, you'll always see with a pitchfork. Well, that's the trident of, of Neptune. It's the religion. It's the conceptual ideas and symbols of religion. Trident of, uh, of Neptune? No, it's the, uh, it's the spear and the uh, pitchfork of the devil. Because you know, I, I you know, I want you to explain to people, uh, you know, how this thing works. Because there's been so much talk about astrology and how you can't trust astrology and this all general stuff and all that kind of thing, and it's been laughed and mocked at. But as it turns out, no, there is a legitimate study of the stars which has given us astronomy, it's given us uh, our, our ability to travel through the stars, we, uh, so it's not to be marked, because mankind for thousands and thousands of years has, uh, has uh, what is the word I'm looking for? They have moved around the earth, 
uh, on their ships. Navigate it is the word I'm looking for. Mankind for thousands of years has navigated according to the stars. You know where constellations are. You know where the different stars are. And when you're on the high seas 5,000 years ago, they realized how to navigate on the high seas of the world by knowing the stars. Well, so if you're going to navigate around the world by the stars, why don't you think about navigating your life uh, to the stars? Because in point of fact, this is exactly what's happening, is that the stars and the heavens are dominating the human lives and we don't know it. Let me give you a reason why. Because in the Bible and the New Testament, Jesus says, when you pray, pray this way. It's called the Our Father Prayer. And it's the Lord's Prayer. Well, in point of fact, it's not the Lord's Prayer. In point of fact, that's not right at all. It's not the Lord's Prayer. It's the Lord telling you it's your prayer. The Lord's Prayer was when he was in the Garden of, of Gethsemane and about to die, when the Lord talked to his Father, God. But that was the Lord's Prayer. No, the one that he told you to pray. He said, when you pray, pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come and thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. What is being said there is in your face, overwhelmingly in your face, if you understand theology and the symbolism of, of theology, what is being said there is that Jesus is saying, when you pray, pray our Father who art in heaven, your creator is your Father, your creator, whoever that is, uh, in heaven, uh, let thy kingdom come. What kind of life on this earth is grouped into a kingdom? We know that birds are in flocks, uh, sheep are in, um, um, you know, fish are in schools. Can't I can't think about all of this, but all the different, you know, lions are in prides, birds are in flocks. Uh, well, you have the mineral kingdom, you have the animal kingdom. Yeah, but that, but you, uh, you know, and uh, and I was going to say, and you have the flocks of uh, the sheep are in flocks. So I'm saying that the way we use terms, going back thousands of years, we put uh, different life forms into different categories. And fish are in schools of fish. Well, what is it that we have today in life forms that are in a kingdom if it's not the animal kingdom? So when, you, when you're asking God, let your kingdom come, the kingdom is the kingdom of animals. It's not, humans are not in a kingdom. We're not classified being in a kingdom. Um, so when you are asking God to let your kingdom come, you're saying, let your animal kingdom come. And that's true, Jordan, well, because there are not that many human figures in the zodiac. That's right. Well, what does the word zodiac come from? It gives us the word zoo. Zodiac. Zodiac. Zoo. And the zoo is, gives us zodiac. Zodiac is a kingdom of animals. So what you're saying in that prayer that Jesus told you to pray, to let, let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven, what you're saying is let your, you're saying to God, uh, let that animal kingdom that we call the zoo, the zodiac, let your will be done on the earth. Well, it's going to be done on the earth whether you like it or not. The constellations and the animal kingdom of the zodiac is going to have its will done. Saturn is going to do what it's going to do on the earth, and Pisces is going to do what it wishes to do, and, and Taurus is going to do what it wishes to do, whether you like it or not. It don't depend on you. So if you're smart, you would say to the Creator, our Father who art in heaven, let your kingdom your animal kingdom, the zoo, the zodiac, 
let your kingdom come on the earth where he's going to, whether you like it or not. And let your will be done. That's God's will, the will of the zodiac, the will of the planets, the will of the stars. <clears throat> so let your kingdom come and your will be done as it is in heaven. Well, of course, you've got the 12 signs in heaven, and they represent the will of the God. They will represent the will of the God, and you say, well, let your will come on the earth as it is in heaven. Well, it's going to, whether you like it or not. Right, because no one that I'm aware of, Jordan, has enough political clout and influence to rearrange these constellations, giving they're sometimes hundreds of light years away. That's right. It's beyond human corruption. And also, too, this being said, I mean, the scientists will concede this. Every atom of everything that's on this planet came out of the guts of a dying star. That's the crucible of life. That's where those atoms were formulated. That's it. That's where they come from. And, they, and I've also heard the scientists talking about the sun. Uh, when you are born, the, the energy from the sun, the, the hidden occult in, uh, significant energies of the sun hit the, the newborn child when it comes out of the mother and it helps to form your personality and the different parts of the body are affected by the different vibrating frequencies of the different planets uh, so that Mars and you know uh, famous books Mars are for men and Venus is women well there is something to that that we are part of the universe we are part of the earth and the Earth is part of a solar system, and the solar system is part of a galaxy. We are a part of a living thing. We call it a galaxy. We call it space, but we are a part of it because it's living. And so are we. The sun's living, and the sun is energy. And so we are energy. And so, but, you know, most people don't know the difference, and, and I understand why. The difference between regular Babylonian Sumerian astronomy, uh, astrology, and what Nostradamus did. Nostradamus did not exactly do what we call astrology. He did something quite different, which makes 500 years later, his work is still respected around the world, and people still write books and make movies and articles about Nostradamus because he wasn't doing exactly what we call astrology, though it's similar. And maybe you could explain to the audience what the difference between the old system of astrology, which was the Babylonian, Akkadian, Chaldean, and Egyptian astrology, as opposed to what Nostradamus did. Yeah, okay. I think it's very interesting when you explain the size of the, the of the constellations and impact the reading. Maybe you could explain that a little bit. Yeah, and before I do that, another thing too. This thing called astrology, I myself was dismissive of, dismissive of it. But there's interesting things that happen in astrology. Take take puberty. Um, when you look at the zodiac, and after I talk about this, Jordan, I will talk about Nostradamus and the Egyptians and such. But uh, when you look at the zodiac, you have the constellations of Ophiuchus Scorpio. Most people, when you're referring to signs, we're talking about constellations. There is no Ophiuchus in the signs. But when you look at the sky, Scorpio actually occupies a very small sliver of space on the ecliptic, and then comes Ophiuchus. So I'm of the opinion what's conventionally known as Scorpio is really a, just simply a combination of Ophiuchus and Scorpio. This being said, though, it's said Scorpio and Ophiuchus rule the genital genitalia. Okay, that's what the conventional definition of what body part that area of the zodiac rules. Yeah. Opposite that is Taurus, and it said Taurus rules the throat. Well, what happens to children at puberty? When they start getting pubic hair, their voice deepens. Now, why is there a connection to that in the Zodiac? Taurus and Scorpio, directly opposing each other. One rules the region of the genitalia, one rules the voice. And just like clockwork at puberty, when pubic hair appears, the voice deepens. There's the Taurus, Scorpio, Afiyukian connection. Now, is that something someone can just dismiss? I mean, it's, inter I it's interesting as hell. That tells me there's something systematic at work here. There's something yep. systematic, and this, this is not, not to be prejudiced. 
Um, and then when no. you when you when you go uh, go back to what Nostradamus did, I'm of the opinion Nostradamus was not using what we call astrological signs. Astrological signs are a man-made, man-made projection onto the ecliptic. You basically take the ecliptic, divide it into 12, 30-degree equal sectors, and unfortunately, ecliptical sector one is called Aries. That's very misleading because there's a group of stars, a constellation that is not 30 degrees, it's actually 25 degrees, called Aries. It misleads people into thinking that this thing called a sign is the same as the constellation. It's not. Astrology as it's practiced today, conventionally, there are no stars in it other than the sun. That's it. So, now, Nostradamus, anyone can go on the YouTube and verify there's references to Nostradamus and the constellation of Ophiuchus. Well, Ophiuchus does not exist when you're using signs. So, yeah. if Nostradamus, if there's reference to him in Ophiuchus, that to me just implies simple common sense that he was pointing his telescope at the sky. He was not using signs. He's using yeah. constellations. And the constellations, I really think are beyond the human capacity for corruption. No one has enough power, megalomania, depravity, to rearrange the constellations. They don't. No, you're right. You're right. And another thing, too, George Carlin talked about this, when you're getting into the nature of religion and the stars. Uh, basically, all everything that we see that we consider material in this world, I mean, the atoms for that were formed in the guts of stars. Everyone acknowledges that. Even the scientist. And, uh, you know, everyone really, there's this longing to return to the sky. I think that's, that's right. for all, uh, look at history, how much oppression and suppression there has been in regards to astrology. Yet there's still that longing for the sky. It is probably, it's just, it's, it's us, something's going on on some evolutionary level. And the stars are part the process, the bestuaries of life dictating that process, and we're all aw- vaguely aware of it. Well, I mean, Christians will tell you that when they die, they're going to go into heaven. Well, that, well, that scientifically is true. That's where the atoms are going to return <laughs> to eventually. They, they came from a star, and they're going to go back to where they came from. Yeah, so they're going to go to heaven with God's Son. S-U-N. That's why on the, when you're worshiping on Sunday, S-U-N, you're worshiping the sun, not S-O-N as a man. No, S-U-N. It's called Sunday. And so you go to church for the magical trip on Sunday. And so the sun, the ancient Egyptians said that the sun was pure energy, and energy is life. And so the sun was distributing his energy. If he kept, uh, if he kept all of his energy, the sun, S-U-N, <clears throat> was a he, a male god, a male divinity. And if the sun were to keep, jealously keep all of his energy for himself, then there would be no life because life is energy. And so when the, but, but the sun which obviously doesn't belong to you or Chinese or Africans or anybody else. It belongs to God. So it was God's son. And God's son was the light of the world. Well, of course the sun is the light of the world. What else lights the world if it's not the sun? And he was your risen savior. Of course he's your risen savior. If the damn thing don't come up, we're dead in three weeks. (laughs) <laughs> so it is your risen savior and of course the energy is giving us energy and the sun is giving us energy so that the plants can grow and we can have a warm atmosphere where we can live and we can grow because of the sun giving us energy so therefore energy is life so we're saying that God's son the light of the world our risen savior is giving his life so that you might live so we say, you know what, you know what, the God's son died so that you might live. Yeah, that's true. The son is dying because it's giving its energy away continually. And one day it's going to give all of its energy away, it's going to blow up and it's gone. Because it gave away all its energy. Well, but yeah, but it gave its energy for you so that you could live. So God's son gave his life so that you might live. <clears throat> 
So when you when you begin to break down the the metaphors, you begin to see that the entire thing is a uh, of religion, especially Christianity, is based on the worship of the sun. That's why Christians go to worship God's Son, the light of the world, our risen Savior, on Sunday. And uh, but the other thing was that I was wanted to explain to the audience, in case they, in case there are people like me that didn't understand it <clears throat> at first, if you draw a round circle and put a, uh, in the uh, all around that round circle little dots, and you you put 360 dots equally spaced around a, a round circle, you now have uh, basically the sun with 360 uh, degrees, or 360 dots around the circle. If you pick one of those dots, it doesn't matter on a circle which one, just pick one, and then draw straight across the, the circle and hit the opposite on the other side, you have now divided the circle exactly in one half. So now you have two halves of a circle. Then you go 90 degrees or 90 dots, uh, and now you hit the middle of that half circle and draw it straight across, and now you've divided that circle into four pieces. This is why God's Son, uh, his whole story of God's Son, is given to us in four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, spring, summer, autumn, winter. And this is why Da Vinci, when he painted the Last Supper, go to the Vatican, go on the web, and look at the, the famous painting of the Da Vinci's Last Supper, and you will see Jesus as God's Son, our risen Savior. Uh, he's sitting with his chosen twelve. I don't know why. He could have had 18 disciples. No, no, he only had 12 apostles. And the, and the 12 in the picture, in the painting, are three, now four groups of three people together. So three people are talking to each other. The next three people are talking to each other. And so there are four different groups of three people. That's right. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. The 12 months of the year. The 12 signs of the zodiac. The 12 brothers of Joseph. The 12 uh, tribes of Israel. It's all sun worship. It's all ancient astrology. The entire Old and New Testament is an astrological story. And the rabbis I've talked to all over the planet, wherever I go, I talk to rabbis and Jesuit priests and, and writers and researchers and professors and university people, and everybody seems highly intelligent and well-read, all seem to understand it. Yeah, it's all astrology. That's all Christianity has ever been. Jesus is God's Son, the, our risen Savior. He has 12 apostles. There are 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 stones on the breastplate of the high priest of Israel. Everything is done in 12. And also, too, Jordan, even the, the pagan astrotheology, the 12 labors of Hercules. That's right. It's the yeah, same the story. The cross, you know? It's the same story. It's incredible. It's been around. That's why the Bible is referred to as the greatest story ever told. Simple. It's the only story that's ever been told. It's the story of the Son with the 12 helpers who help bring the truth to light. And so truth is always ev equated with light. That's why when you go into a, uh, into a courtroom, in a trial, you have 12 jurors. Why? Because the 12 jurors help bring to light the truth. Because God's Son is the light of the world, and he has 12 helpers to bring the light of truth to the world. And so each month does bring light to the world. Uh, but the point I was uh, getting at is that in relation to what you're talking about, what Nostradamus did, because once you divide that, that round circle into 12 equal parts, there will, be 30, uh, there will be 30 days or 30 degrees in each one. So that you've got 12, uh, in that circle, you've got 12 pieces of the pie, and each slice is 30 uh, degrees or 30 uh, dots. 
And so, therefore, the ancient people said that each one of the constellations was represented by the 30 days of the month. So each 30-day period had a particular uh, astrological sign assigned to it. So that's why we today have 30 days in a month. And so every 30 days, the month changes, and there's a different astrological sign. But what you were saying that, that Nostradamus figured out is that the constellations are not divided correctly into, I mean, uniformly into 30 degrees each. No. So one, one, one constellation is very small, mm -hmm. another constellation is very large, so you can't do that. You can't divide the 12 signs of the zodiac each year into nice, neat 30 dots or 30 degrees apiece, because they're not 30 degrees. One's big and one's small. So Nostradamus knew that, and that's why I wanted you to maybe elaborate on that a little bit. Well, that That's exactly it, Jordan. When you're using constellations, um, they're unequal. They're unequal in size. Virgo, you know, it, it moves between 42 and 47 degrees. That's 15, nearly 15 degrees more than the sign Virgo, which is 30. Cancer is, uh, cancer is 20 degrees. That's very small. So these constellations are unequal in size. And uh, another thing, too, I think this gets back to what was occurring in ancient Egypt. This gets back into something. I'm not an archaeologist, so I don't have the proof for my idea here, but this is speculation. But this thing called astrological signs versus the constellations, I think this is directly tied to Egypt and when the Greeks went into Egypt, which would be around the time of Alexander the Greek, even though he's Macedonian. That being said, you look at these mega, various megalithic structures around the world. They were aligned to the constellations. Now, they're not aligned now because of the procession of the equinoxes and the passage of time, but they were aligned to the constellations. I do not believe they were aligned to astrological logical signs. No, no, not at all. See, when no, you look at... The ancient peoples actually look in the sky. Correct. No. They didn't go to a book and say, well, it's December, that must be Capricorn. No, no, go out and actually look up in the sky and see which constellation is there, and you'll find out, no, it wasn't what you thought it was. Well, this being said, the month of April, really, we associate it with Aries, but when you take into account the procession of the equinoxes and the passage of time, April, the month of April should be associated with Taurus. That should be associated with Taurus. The month of March. March. I mean, that's what armies do. Armies march. Shouldn't be associated with Pisces. March should be associated with the constellation of Aries. See? So, when you get into this thing called astrological signs, I just think you're, you're introducing distortions. And when you're looking yep. at the constellations, you're getting a pure form of undiluted truth. Now, you know, I mean, you're going to have your various astrologers, they're going to have their human biases and limitations, but I still think looking at the constellations is better than looking at the signs. Now, in regards to Nostradamus, once again, on YouTube, there's references to Nostradamus and Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus does not exist when you're talking about signs. So that tells me he was looking at the sky, which yeah. is really what the uh, old Sumerian and Babylonian astrologers for the kings, because in those days, astrology was, and even through medieval times, kings had their court astrologers. It was a branch of political intelligence, and they were looking at the sky. That's where every, all this, th this thing called astrology is derived from. But you have people today using signs. They never look at the sky. There's no need to when you're using signs. I don't think that's good. No. Well, you're right, and it was a, a branch of political intelligence because anybody who has read history and studied history knows it's replete. The, the history of, of, the, of the world is, is filled with uh, documentation on how the kings would call their court astrologers, they would call their men who studied the stars, their soothsayers, whatever. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, all the ancient kings knew that. And today, the people who are in power today behind the scenes, they are also looking very, very seriously at the, the, the whole idea of astrology and when the best time to do something. We know Hitler was involved in it. We know the, the Nazis were involved in the study of astrology. 
we know that uh, in America, all the American presidents used astrology, and uh, they had their astrologers. Well, well so but, George, uh, George, on the idea of Hitler, sorry to interrupt, but Hitler, sometimes yeah. the charges leveled, he used astrology and he lost the war. But then again, you could say, yeah, but the Allies were using astrology too. Yeah, and they won the war. So. Yeah, and then, and it even talks about in the Bible, in the Old Testament, there are scriptures that say, and the stars fought for the king so-and-so. King so-and-so went to war, and the stars in the heavens fought for him. Simply meaning that he was going to war at a good time, according to the stars. And so, it says the stars fought for him. And, and the Apostle Paul says that uh, God is speaking to the nations of the world every night from the heavens, but nobody is listening. God speaks from the heavens each night. All over the world, people are seeing uh, God talking to them. What are you talking about? God speaking to the nations of the world every night from the heavens. Well, it's God's kingdom, and the kingdom is going to come, whether you like it or not. The, the, the constellational signs have power, and they're going, to, they're going to affect you. The kings know that. You know, what was that famous quote that we, we uh, you know, a few years ago, some financer said, um, some guy in financing, big shot in banking, he said... Oh, J.P. Morgan. Uh, millionaires don't... J.P. Morgan, that's right. And he said, millionaires do not use astrology. Billionaires do. Well, on that note, Jordan, right here, the, oh. the, the Independent, this is a magazine in the United Kingdom, jump clear of the market when Mars enters Libra. And this is about the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Okay, It says, 10 billion pounds worth of investment funds are influenced by astrology. If you and I'm reading quoting from the article right here, if you know astrology had a hand in managing the investments that will make up your pension, you might be more than a little worried. Okay? So here it is yeah. right here. Um, let's let's look at the European Bank for uh, Reconstruction and Development. They're quoted here in this article too. And let's see what they say about their computer systems. European Bank um, let's see. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development announced last, last September that astroeconomics played a role in its investment strategy. Mark Curtis, the EBRD's European Bank for Reconstruction and Development's treasurer, while not a believer in astrology, described the influence of certain planetary alignments on markets as uncanny. So, now this is me quoting from the Independent. This is out there for everyone to read for themselves. The article is entitled, Jump Clear of the Market When Mars Enters Libra. So I just think, Jordan, it basically supports and busters, but buttresses everything you just said. Yeah, well, and see, I, and you've been doing this kind of reading and studying Nostradamus for years and doing readings for people and i know because i've gotten you a lot of readings i've introduced you to a lot of my friends a lot of people because i'm on the radio and i'm talking to people and so i you know, and, and and what i get a lot from all over the world on radio when people call in they want to know what's going on with me you know this is happening to me and my this is going on and my my wife is doing this and my my kids are in trouble and whatever it is and oh, oh, I don't know, I don't understand what's going on. And I think when I'm hearing this, and I hear it all the time, I wish you understood how the world really works. And I, I, I'm just at a loss for, to try and explain to people there's a difference between the astrology, which is generally accepted today, and the real uh, uh, overwhelmingly positive proof that the heavens do influence us. We are influenced by the stars, by the sun, and by the moon. The moon pulls the oceans of the world. People, a lot of people don't realize that the moon is able to pull the oceans. The tides of the seas are pulled by the effects of the moon. Well, if the moon affects the Pacific Ocean, well, you are 70, 80 percent water. Does it affect you? Because yes. You're water. <clears throat> yes, because that, well, that, is that, that why they, yeah, is that why they call you a lunatic? <clears throat> because you act crazy at a particular time of the moon. 
<coughs> and that's going to affect commerce. The rising of the tides is going to affect shipping, which is going to affect commerce. Hence why I go back and say the moon has a connection to what we call money. It's awfully etymog right. etymolo etymologically close to the word moony. That's right. Moon, money. And also, too, when yeah. you're talking about the moon and money in commerce, opposite the sign Cancer, which the rule, the moon rules, and the moon does have a huge role on the Earth tides, is the constellation of Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is referred to as Kronos, which is the, the lord of time. So whenever you're talking about money, you're talking about the time of things. And that basically gets into Saturn also being the exalted ruler of Libra. Libra rules the law. You're talking commerce you're talking contracts which are premised on time something will be done in a certain amount of time also too when you're talking about the moon and Saturn this gets very interesting which makes me think something you said long long ago when we started this this uh, conversation um, intervention who 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 this is not these, these are not things that are obvious to the casual observer but the moon's orbit about the Earth is 29 days. Saturn's orbit about the Sun is 29 years. There is a Moon-Saturn correspondence. There's a certain resonance in this number 29 between the two. And this gets into that phrase time and tide because also too um, the breaking action of the changing of the tides. It actually is slowing ever so slightly every year the Earth's rotation. So that's going to affect how we measure time. It's, it's, it's all interconnected, and it makes me think, when you, when you talk about astrotheology, I just, I can't help but think, this is all pointing to intervention, because this is, these are not things obvious to the chimp <laughs> out there eating his, or the gorilla out there eating their bananas in the jungle. Somebody basically <laughs> said, this thing called the human creature is not that smart. So we're going to give them a good story because it's pointless with these creatures to get into the esoteric and the technicalities of what's really going on with this thing called existence. They're not going to get it. They're still throwing their children in the volcano to make the harvest better. No, you're right. That's exactly right. And then whoever it was that created us is watching us. And that's exactly uh, that's what I would be thinking. And so that's what I would think if I were looking down on the earth and I was seeing all the chaos and the violence and corruption and stupidity and ignorance and, and evil that's going on on the earth. I would say, you know, these, this, this creation is not going to get the dark and deep and spiritual uh, wisdom of the ancients. They're not going to get it. They, they're watching television and basketball. And all they want to do is eat and, and reproduce and chase women and watch basketball and football and their silly sports. So they're not really interested in, and they don't even have the ability to think deeply on deep and dark and spiritual things which make up the universe, which make up our, our life on the earth and, and how we, you know, who we are as humans and where do we go when we die and all of those kind of questions. They're not interested. All they're interested in is who who's playing on tonight, what game is... So I, I, would, I would feel the same way. I would look at this human race and say, you know what, the real truth of the universe and how this whole thing is constructed is the business of God. It's God's business, not yours, because <clears throat> it's on a need-to-know basis and you don't need to know because all you're interested in is your silly-ass ball games and your silly-ass uh, corruption that you live in. But if you were spiritually grounded and intelligent, which you're not, but if you were intelligent and spiritually grounded, you would know that we are part of the universe. Something out there is now down here. It came down here, and we are here now, and we didn't just by chance pop up out of nowhere. It's ludicrous on the face of it to assume that evolution uh, has any valid, valid, anything valid in evolution is ludicrous on the face of it when you're talking about where man came from. Anything which is, which is so incredibly difficult uh, to explain and intricate uh, as a human being reproducing another human being 
that has uh, hundreds of miles, if not, uh, I've heard thousands of miles of blood veins in the, in the human body. The human has a brain, which is a computer. Uh, it has a spinal cord, an electrical system, a computerized brain. Uh, it can reproduce itself, and all of this just by chance happened by a bunch of monkeys reproducing, and we popped out. You really have to be mentally disordered to even suggest such a thing in front of intelligent people. So, intervention, there's something going on here with the universe and who we are, and the reason why Christians, and this is another point, Christians are continually, like all the other religionists, Islam, crawling on their knees three to five, six times a day, ranting and screaming out, yelling their silly ass prayers to Allah, the moon god, and they're blowing, I know, I've been all over the Middle East, and I've been into Egypt, and at two or three o'clock in the morning, they start blowing through the PA systems of the city, some, some, uh, some goofball rant and raving and screaming some prayer at three o'clock in the morning, and they pray like five times a day, and, and turn to Mecca, and then into the east, and it all has to do with the Masonic astronomy, and all has to do with ancient Freemasonry, but the, the Islam has no knowledge of any of that. They don't know where their religion comes from. I know. All you gotta do is read a book, go to a library, and you'll find out that uh, Islam is nothing more than a very ancient form of Freemasonry, a Masonic order. <clears throat> And it also gets into commerce. That's a whole other story we'll get into another time. Yeah, that'll be the uh, the next discussion, Jordan, because that gets yeah. into Solomon Bar Isaac, Solomon's Temple, alias Rashi, the year 1040, right. his birthday. But going back to the stars, Jordan, um, what you were saying, these people call you with questions. And also, too, what astrology, when you're looking at it this way... It shows you how mathematics is tied to theology, yet in our educational system today, everything's compartmentalized. You can't make sense of any damn thing. You don't see how it's interconnected, how it's interrelated. But when you get into astrology, you start to get at least a little glimpse of some type of integration, this uh, holistic whole that's working. And also, too, you mentioned when these people call you with their questions. My idea at this time, um, when you're looking at your astrological chart or anyone else's astrological charts, you've got a 2% conscious awareness of what you think you're doing. Then when you get into the look at what, it, what astrology implies, you start to realize, no, there's a much deeper evolutionary process here at work. And you're part of it and this thing is flowing through you so you have your two percent conscious awareness of what you think you're doing in life but on a much deeper biological level you have an evolutionary role in the species and you're playing that out so to you it just looks like chaos you don't understand like you said why my wife's doing this why my children are doing this why i'm suffering this but what's really going on there's a bigger story here and you're part of it that's exactly right. And, it, and we are, you know, ask a little eight-year-old eight, eight year old child, where is God? <clears throat> and they'll point straight out into heaven. God's out there. Out there? Yeah, God's out there. Well, do you believe in angels? Yeah. Well, where are angels? Well, they're out there. So I don't know, if you know, even an eight-year-old child would tell you where God is. Out there. Out there meaning where? Well, you go out in the stars and point out there. Well, that's that's what we call the heavens well that's where god is god's in heaven well of course he's in heaven and he has 12 helpers he has the 12 apostles no he has the 12 signs of the zodiac the 12 months of the year matthew mark luke and john spring summer autumn winter get it it's a whole story it's called the greatest story ever told and that's why because it's the only story that's ever been told it's astro it's astrology but the correct and true astrology has nothing to do, as you say, with the signs as symbols. It has to do with actually going out and looking up straight over your head and looking at the stars and seeing what constellation is there. Now apply that to you and your life, and then things start making sense. But uh, unfortunately, the church, which is uh, Circe, Mother Circe, Mother Kirk, Mother Church, 
has uh, used her magic, uh, her Babylonian magic, to bring people into her house, lock the door behind them, take the brains and eat them, and live off of them. And buy their booze and buy their planes and their jets and everything else off of the poor people who have been robbed of their, of their destiny. When all you've got to do is understand how the, the world works, how the stars work, what the constellations are and how all of this works, like a child pointing up in the heaven, well, God's out there. You, you bet your ass he's out there. Something's out there, and it's guiding your destiny, and you don't know it. Well, Jordan, when you, you're speaking of astrology, there's a, here's a practical consideration. Uh, any time you join any of these various organizations who want your money, they always give you some form of literature. You've always got yeah. some form of literature before your eyes, which is tainted, or it could have an agenda you don't understand. Uh, you know, and then people wonder why. Why am I running in the walls? Why am I hitting no. these blocks? Because what's in front of your eyes is their literature. But when you cast that to the ground and just look at the stars, just from a very pragmatic point of view, you are getting an undiluted form of truth. There is no human agenda there that I'm aware of. Once again, I don't know of anyone evil and corrupt enough to rearrange the constellation of Pisces. So just from a very practical point of view, a very pragmatic point of view, a point of view where you're not going to prejudice any source of information, that's probably the purest form of undiluted truth you're going to get. Uh, even on the surface of the earth, maybe these ancients had a very profound story for humanity, but they realized, you know, anything you you put on the surface of this earth it's it's subject to destruction look what just happened in the Philippines so where did they decide to put the real message and I think Paul of Violet um, he gets into this the deeper meanings right. of what's going on in the tarot and they put that message somewhere where it's not going to be corrupted it's not subject to uh, earthly disasters and such and corruption and all these things it's a very deep deep story oh, of course but that's why I said Mankind has navigated around the world for thousands of years by the stars. The United States Navy, the British uh, uh, Navy, the maritime uh, ships of the sea around the world. Captains must understand how to navigate by the stars in case something happens, and there and you know something happens where they don't have the automatic. <coughs> um, uh, directors, at least they can go out because they've got the education to go out and look up into the heavens and see the stars, and they can navigate uh, where they're going by the stars. Well, if they can do that, why don't you navigate your life by the stars? And this is what exactly I, I, I told you a long time ago, that the very word a star, A-S-T-A-R, a star, as though as in the old English, a star, S-T-A-R. We take the A off of it and just spell it A-S, uh, we spell it S-T-A-R, but it, called, it was also spelled A-S-T-A-R, a star. And so the idea was is that if you don't know how to read the A-stars, your life will be a dis-A-star. Exactly. And this is exactly what's happening because the people's lives are in a disaster. this a star because you don't understand the heavens. You don't understand. The, the farmers do. They know when to plant a particular crops and when to harvest, when to do certain things. I mean, uh, it's all, you know, the almond, the, uh, the almond act, the almond act tells the farmers what years, I mean, what month is going to be good for planting and what month is good for, for harvesting. Why? Because it has to do with the ass stars. And if you don't understand that, your life is going to be a dis -ass star. So uh, this is why the church is so reprehensible, because it has, it, has taught, taught, it has taught the people to turn away from truth. Come inside the house. Shut the door behind. Take your brain away so that, and tell you all kinds of stories and not allow you to know what the Pope knows. They don't want you to know what the Vatican knows. But if you go to the Vatican, as I have, and if you study the works of the Vatican, you will see everything in the Vatican is, is, is in your face astrology. 
They even have a huge, uh, um, beautifully done um, uh, carving. What am I trying to say? I, I, um, <clears throat> what is it? A statue or carving of Mary. Mary is, uh, and uh, you know, they call Jesus' mother Mary. M A R Y. No, no, no. It's M A R I. Mari, not Mary. Mari. And Mari was was connected to the constellation of Virgo. Virgo, the Virgin. This is why Jesus is born of a virgin, because Jesus is God's son. So the son in the constellation of Virgo is born of a virgin. And Mari, M-A-R-I, not M-A-R-Y. Mari means pure. Anything which is pure is Mari. If you have distilled water, it's Mari water. It's, it's, it's pure. Therefore, they said that a virgin, a young girl, a virgin, is pure. So virgins were called Mari, M-A-R-I. And so Jesus is born of a virgin. Virgo, the constellation. So, well, Jordan, on that you know, note, on that note, you uh, you'll see pictures of uh, Mari with her, the Virgin, with her her foot on the head of the snake. And when you look right. at the sky and you look at Ophiuchus, Ophiuchus is the snake tamer. Ophiuchus is holding a huge snake. That's the mythological symbol in the sky. And it just so happens the foot of the Virgin is on the head of that snake. So now exactly you right. know where they're getting that <laughs> symbolism from. That's exactly right. And that has to That's do with Jesus actually being Ophiuchus. And you've got to understand, um, because of the procession of the equinoxes, things have shifted a little bit. But this gets into the story of his death and resurrection. Yep. Uh, I, you know, and I know, I know, and it's so difficult, and it's very frustrating for me to try and impress an audience with how important this kind of esoteric knowledge of the stars really is. It's very, very depressing to me because I know, I've watched it happen, where you've told me over and over and over again, over the past 16 years that I've known you, you will call me, say, the months ahead of something, and tell me, watch this particular month, three months or six, six months from now, on this date, Mars is going to do this, and, and Saturn's going to do that, the constellation will be this or that, and that's going to cause this to happen. So watch, it's going to happen, but it won't happen for six months. And every single time you've ever done that, it happened exactly like you said. I mean, I remember especially uh, that one time that you called me, I don't know even when it was, it was about a year and a half before, the event, and you called and were talking to me about, you were looking at my chart, my birth chart, and you said, and a year and a half from now, and you said September, and I remember this because it was very important to me, you said, September, something like a year and a half from now, whatever it was, somebody is going to do something to make a movie or a television show or a video, something is going to be done in the in the world of entertainment uh, that's going to be based on your work and it's going to make you famous and it, but you are not going to know anything about it you won't know anything about it it'll just come out but it'll make you famous and it's going to be very very big but it won't happen for a year and a half from now and you gave me the uh, the, the month it would happen and I remember that. And then a year and a half later, in that very month, Zeitgeist came out. <laughs> Peter Joseph yeah. produced this two-hour video called Zeitgeist, which he said, not me, Peter Joseph said on the radio that Zeitgeist, which, uh, you know, at the time, two weeks after or three weeks after it came out on Google, it said that 500 million people had been watching it around the world. So, uh, so as it was a big, it was a big hit around the world. And Peter Joseph said uh, that it was based all on Jordan Maxwell's work. And I think he said that on the Jeff Rents show. He did. He said that on the Jeff Rents show. He said the entire Zeitgeist movie, the Zeitgeist one, the very first one, uh, was all based on the work of Jordan Maxwell. Well, that's what you told me a year and a half before. 
and it was uh, and it was fifty million. Now I'm thinking about one to five hundred fifty million. But fifty million people at three months after it came out is a very heady number. Oh uh, well, at that I remember Jordan because at that time, I mean, they would have the top-rated videos on Google. Google was a little different. I mean, YouTube was a little different back then, and this thing would be right next to the Michael Jackson videos. Yeah, and it was based on my work, and you said that it would make me famous, it would be based on my work, and I wouldn't know anything about it. And then I didn't. I had no idea in the world what Zeitgeist was until people started calling me and saying, you know, the, this, this thing is 50 million people have seen it in three months, and, it's all, and, and, the, and the guy who produced it in New York said it was all based on your work. Uh, well, that's what you said, a year and a half before it happened. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And see, I couldn't. See, I couldn't say it specifically, Jordan. I could see the general trend. I knew something like that was going to happen. I, I'm not. Well, yeah. so, I'm not so good where I know it's going to be a man named Peter Joseph, and it's going to be released on uh, released on this specific date at this time. But you can see the overall trend. Sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah. Jordan, I didn't mean so. Well, no. But you told me uh, it's going to happen around around September, and it'll, and uh, that's going to be the month, and it did. And then September, we at the end of September, right, the late part of the September, <clears throat> it came out Zeitgeist. And then you told me uh, almost a year before, I remember talking about this, and you told me one day you called and we were talking and you said, you know, in about a year from now, at this particular month, watch what's going to happen. There's going to be a banking crisis. And the banks all over the world are going to go under, and it's going to be massive. And you said millions of people are going to be losing their homes, losing their jobs. It's going to be massive chaos in the banking world. Watch it. And when it comes, it's going to hit the world like a flood, <clears throat> and there's nothing we're going to do about it. And exactly what happened of that same month that you told me, a year ahead of time, that very month is when the housing crisis, the bubble busted, and the whole banking thing around the world started falling apart, just like you said it would on that in that very month that you said it was going to happen. <clears throat> so the reason I'm saying this is because so many people that I have sent to you, uh, when you do an astrological reading on them from the Nostradamus perspective, and so using constellations, and using const and using constellations, Correct. and not the signs. Right. It is extraordinarily uh, uh, accurate. But my, as I said, the one thing that is so uh, uh, you know confusing and difficult for me is how do I tell the world that I have uh, uh, s someone that can do this, and it's legitimate. Because if I tell the world, I've found a guy who's incredible with his readings on the astrological readings, and they'll say, oh, that's that bullshit astrology stuff. No, we're not interested in all that bullshit astrology. No, no, it's not bullshit. We're talking about Nostradamus reading the actual constellations, not the signs, and understanding the connections the way the, the ships on the sea understand it, and understanding how this stuff really works. And so that's been very frustrating to me, because when I uh, mention Nostradamus, the first thing I would get, because of Christianity teaching, uh, that, you know, not to have nothing to do with Christian, no, I have anything to do with astrology, because that's all of the devil. And all the word devil is, is putting a D, put the letter D in front of the word evil, and it becomes devil and put an O, take an O out of the word good and becomes God. God is good, devil is evil. Just the using of, of letters in the alphabet. Right, and, and there's but a validity to that. People, once again, are going to think, you know, you and I are just playing fast and loose with etymology, but take the word God, reverse it, it becomes dog. And when you're talking about right. religion, you always have something called dogma. That's right. And then you have the dog star, which is related to Sirius, which I think points to a story about the gods but then again yep i'm telling you that there and so the point i want, want to make is that for years i've had you tell me things that are going to happen you know privately we talk and things are going to happen and when they're going to happen and be damned if they don't happen exactly when you said and exactly the way you said it was going to 
but now uh, again my frustration is well how do I go out and tell the world this how do I go out and tell the world that you know astrology is not bullshit if it's done correctly if it's done and understood correctly it is uh, astonishingly accurate if you do it correctly if you're doing it the way most people are then that's just general astrology based on the old Sumerian records but if you're doing it the correct way and not using the constellations, not using the signs, but actually going out and looking at the constellations, yeah, looking at the, the sky, yeah. looking at the yeah. sky, then it's accurate. So I would suggest anybody who would like to test this, I, Jordan Maxwell, am putting my imprimatur of my name on your work because I've known you for 16 years. I've watched what you've done for 16 years, and as far as I'm concerned, I've never seen anybody more correct. And like you said, you're not you're not God. You're not proclaiming uh, in minute detail. No, but I've seen you do it so many times. They're telling you, well, here's what's coming. Right. Generally speaking, here's what's going to happen. And uh, and every time you said things like that, it have always happened. So. That's why I'd like for the whole world to know about you and what you're doing, because I consider, not just because you're my friend, no, I I get excited when I see something that really is legitimate and works, because I'm very pragmatic in my life, and I've had so many things that I believed in that don't work, but when I find something that actually is in your face every time, and it works every time, I'm very anxious to tell all my friends and everyone else you better look at this. This is serious stuff because it's accurate all the time. Yeah, and it has so a lot of implications know. about uh, what we've not been told about the nature of our existence. And uh, well, yeah, and right. and also too, Jordan. You know, I mean, yeah, you're kind of you're you're getting the cosmic weather, so people don't expect too much. You're getting the cosmic weather. That doesn't mean you're going to know where raindrop three billion four hundred sixty-seven thousand precise trajectory is going to be. But just having a general understanding of what the upcoming cosmic weather is going to be can be very useful. And once again, you know, I tell people, go on the Internet, go to the independent a United Kingdom newspaper, jump clear of the market when Mars enters Libra. Ten billion pounds yep. worth of investment funds are influenced by astrology. And it's, you know, these planetary cycles called astroeconomics plays into the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Anybody can verify that. The article is called Jump Clear of the Markets when Mars or jump clear of the market when Mars enters Libra by Sean Lovat and Steve Lodge Sunday 30th of March 1997 so well I know I've been telling all of my friends over the years and sending them to you for readings and uh, and every single time I've never had anyone come back ever and say anything derogatory or anything negative. Everyone I've ever sent to you uh, praise both myself for telling them about you and say that he was extraordinarily accurate, told me of the stuff that was going to happen and, and how it was going to happen and be damn if it didn't happen exactly the way you said. So I keep telling the people that you know, when they tell me that, I said, well, he's not using astrology. He's doing something different. He's going not by the signs, but by the stars themselves. Yes. And so I said, so you, you need, that's why, <clears throat> so that's why astrology has such a bad name. It's, it's not the real thing. Well, that may be by thing. design, Jordan. That may be by design because we'll, we'll have to get into this into a, to another show, which probably might have been the reason behind that. That's probably by design. I, I think so. I think the church has purposely distorted many truths, many things, just to keep the people. Because any time you go to any country where the church is dominant, like South America, Central America, uh, you know, and these these uh, these Spanish towns, that the people are very poor. They crawl on their knees to go to church. They live a very poor life. They're you know. But the church is dominant, and uh, you know, and and the Philippines, the Philippines, the children on the street are starving, little babies, and people and, and kids, ten, eleven years old, holding a baby, 
and uh, and the parents have no money, they have no place, and the babies are sitting out there on the street. The people are starving, and yet the church, there's a church on every corner. All, you know, every corner, there's a liquor store and a church on every corner. Well, that's the two manifestations so of Neptune. Yeah. No, uh, religion and booze. And money. And, uh, <laughs> and money, that's right. So I, I understand what's going on, and I would love for people to, uh, that want to know. Not, every, no, not everybody wants to know, but if you really want to know what's going on in your life, I would highly suggest you talk to my friend who I'm talking with now and have him do a reading on you the way Nostradamus did it. And, and then you will see what I'm talking about. And your, now you will understand how accurate the stars can be if you're doing it the right way. And, so, and George, I, why don't you tell everybody how, how they can get a reading from you? Y tell them, because I don't know. Tell them how, I know I can call you and get a reading, but how do they do it? You just go to the website, truezodiac.org. Truezodiac.org. O R G truezodiac.org and there'll be a link posted up too people can go to but Jordan this all being said maybe this be a good way to wrap up this particular episode um you know my doing shows with you and you sending people to me um you know the only reason you and I are speaking together is because of what's been done to you that's the main thing cuz I know you've been asking me for years come on the radio speak with me yep. now we're doing it because the timing's right but uh on a practical level i did it because i thought you need a moral support and that's why i did that that's why we're doing this and then you know the resp i'd never set out to make a lot of money doing this or to speak to the public at large about it you know for about 16 years i've been saying no i don't want to go on the lecture circuit you know but as a result of what's been um what you've suffered through particularly the latest manifestation of this i said my friend needs some moral support so we did the you know we did a, did some things on the radio and not too long ago and the response was uh, was interesting to say the least <laughs> to oh, say yeah. the least uh, yeah. we got uh, what is it 265,000 downloads in just the first couple of weeks yeah with no zero no advertising whatsoever no advertising i wasn't talking about the fact the, the fact that i had a show called the jordan maxwell show you can still go on the web today and hear the jordan maxwell show and uh and and scroll down and you will see uh the different programs that deal there's three of them that deal with law law with the law and uh, it's called the Jordan Maxwell Show, dealing with the law, and uh, and you and I are on there talking about the law because that's another subject that we'll get into later that you're an expert expert on is the uh, the occult or hidden side of world law, how the laws work, what is a government, how does a government work, what is the connection between government and the church. And church, Cersei, government with the bank and insurance companies and the 14th Amendment. And how does this stuff really work? And Tontine and Insurance. And the reason why yeah. there's one bar over the S when you're referring to Federal Reserve notes, because you're re referring to something called insurance script. It's tied back to something called Tontine Insurance. It used to be two bars over the, over, well, I said the S to you, United States. Now it's one bar. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I've got stamps to show that. I have stamps where there's one line going through the S, and then there are other stamps where there are two lines going through the S when it talks about money. Right. The one and two lines, and I remember the bankers telling me about that many years ago. Why is there on stamps? Uh, on uh, uh, time you anytime you are typing out something about money on paper uh, there's a little s with a line through it to represent money well sometimes there's two lines going through it representing money well there's a difference between the one line and the two lines but it's so subtle nobody knows that but a banker 
and uh, but it all has to do with occultism which is a word simply means hidden well all of the real wisdom of the world has been hidden by governments by churches by secret societies by criminals who know something you don't know and they're hidden they're hiding it from you mm -hmm. so that, you know, that's what I'm trying to do and I've been trying to do for some 45 years is to talk to people about the truth and also too these, these, th on. these things Jordan you can go from cradle to grave never realizing the, the what you were subjected to the rules of the game you were being played by that's right you didn't realize what was going on <clears throat> and how you were being played you know the very word in Greek in the ancient Greek language for God was theos T-H-E-O or theo T-H-E-O-S or theos or theo which is T-H-E we get the word the T-H-E from the Greek word for God so that's why you say if you're working with a man, no, no, I'm working for the man, the, T-H-E, no, he's like God, I'm working for the man. <clears throat> so T-H-E is God. This is why you have um, something called theology. The theology is ology is the study of, and the is God. So theology is the study of God which gives us the word theater, because in the ancient Greek world, the, the subject of God was dispensed through what they called open-air theaters. Well, that's what we have today. We call them churches. It's a theater. You go in, you pay money, you sit down in the seat, and you watch the show. It's called the God Show. It's a the, T-H-E, God, the theater. And the theater, and this is why it's a God Show. And so it's a show. There's nothing to it. It's just a show. It's like any other movie. You go in and pay pay money. You know, get a sandwich and watch the show, and it's over, and you leave. And you don't. You know, it wasn't true. There was nothing true about it. It was just a great entertainment. The only problem is the people who put it on made a lot of money. You didn't get nothing. You just wasted your time and give them money. <laughs> well, that's all that the, the the you know the the whole concept of a theater is a church. You go in and give the church money, and they, she, they're eating off of you, they're, they're feeding off of you, <clears throat> and they sit there, and you go every Sunday for 42 years. You still don't know uh, crap from Shinoa. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what the words mean. <clears throat> you don't know what religion is. You don't want to know what the concepts and the ideas are. You don't know anything. All you know is every Sunday you go there and sit and pay money, and they get rich because they don't have to work. They, you know, they just do a little thing on Sunday morning, and the rest of the week they're driving around in fancy cars. They don't have to work. You're the ones working. <laughs> and they do a little show and, and put on a little show for you, and then uh, you pay them, and it's a theater. Well, uh, you know, there was a, a Jesuit invention. I think it, it was uh, invented in the 1700s called the Magic Lantern. Which is the that's basis right, of magic lantern. the basis? Uh, that's a Jesuit invention, and that's where we get the uh, modern motion picture industry from. That's right. Called the magic lantern. Look it up in the dictionary encyclopedia. Magic lantern was a little box, a little lantern with a with a glass on it, and they put a uh, um, a candle inside of it, and then put a picture on on, on the glass, and it put you know projected on the wall. And that was like you said back in the seventeen hundreds. And from that, today we've got motion pictures. And so, and, and the motion picture cam uh, projectors, the big projectors, <clears throat> the sprocket that feeds the film into the projector, there's a little round sprocket that feeds the film into the projector, is called the Knights of Malta sprocket. Well, the Knights of Malta are a Jesuit creation. It's a Vatican Jesuit mafia La Cosa Nostra, Nazi, SS, Gestapo, Vatican, Operation Paperclip, Knights of Malta. We're talking about the Vatican. We're talking about the Jesuits. We're talking about the Nazis, the SS, and the Gestapo, and Adolf Hitler. There's a whole story there that's never been told about the connections between the Knights of Malta, the, uh, the Knights of Malta organization, 
connected to the Vatican, Vatican Operation Paperclip, which was bringing Nazis after the Second World War into the America to help us with our motion picture industries and our industries and our medical, <clears throat> as I said before, and our medical, American Medical Association, founded by former Nazis, uh, NASA, N-A-S-A, NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, Nazis come directly out of Nazi Germany. So, so much of America is Nazi, right from Germany, right from Berlin. Right. So, well, yeah, but then your medical association, your motion pictures, your television. Your finances, and, uh, your, yeah. the financial yeah, control. Finances. I mean, there's, 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 All of there's another uh, ten shows here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's an incredible amount of knowledge that people don't have. Yeah. So, I would suggest in closing for this time that uh, you go and, and get a reading. And again, where is that? It's called what? True Zodiac, all one word, truezodiac.org. Truezodiac.org. Truezodiac. And how does it work? How does it work? You just go there, and you'll see a big orange button. It says, by appointment only, schedule here. Just click that, and then after that, it takes you to a screen. It's all self-explanatory. Just that simple. Very convenient. Okay. Well, I would suggest everyone listening to do that, because you're going to be awful surprised when you find out that you've been lied to about the whole general subject of the stars and i think what that points to jordan too um for me you know when you look when i look at your chart when you look at my chart um you know there's a third rate consensus version of reality that's the phrase i use that we're indoctrinated with anything worth knowing yeah. you more than likely will not be told uh that being said when you get into the to the stars you start to see a little bit who you are beyond your conditioning yeah and that that's interesting you know it's not like you get your chart read and uh you're going to have immediate material success no you're going to begin the hero's journey now and now you're going to have an understanding who you are on a deeper level that's exactly right then when you do that believe me it changes your life when you begin to see things which are coming to you whether you like it or not and then when they actually happen, just the way it was told to you, and it actually happens, uh, then you begin to realize there is something to this. I remember our friend, our lady friend over in Las Vegas. Uh, you were in my office one time, and she called me, and so I put her on the phone, on the, on the speakerphone, and we were talking with her, and and she said something to the effect that she was getting a car worked on, and you said to her, uh, you, know, you asked her for her birthday, and while I was talking to her, you were configuring her birthday according to the Nostradamus would do it, and then you told her, <clears throat> you said, don't work on your car on Friday. After Friday at a certain time. Don't touch the car. Uh, you've got a week you know, to, to work on the car, but next Friday after a certain, uh, after a certain hour, do not touch that car uh, because all the, the stars are going to be in the wrong place, and so you don't want to touch a car to work on it. So get it done before that. And she did. And she called me, and she was delighted and happy that she got the car fixed uh, you know, in, in plenty of time. And then she called me on Saturday, the following Saturday, and she said, you're not going to believe this, but last night my daughter took the car out to the market and, uh, and <clears throat> there was a light out, the, the, one of the tail lights burned out. She didn't want to get a ticket, so she went to the, the store and picked up uh, the light for the, for, the, for the car and she unscrewed the thing and just to change the bulb, but somehow or another she shorted out the entire Com uh, computer electrical system in the car period the whole thing is gone she burned it out completely and and she said and Joe's you know and you said don't touch the car after a certain uh, time and be damned if the the girl did it not realizing it and uh, you know and so it blew everything in the car so I'm I I see this kind of stuff happening all the time. 
that you tell people don't do this after this day or on this day do this or do that and nobody seems to realize the significance and the importance of that until if you don't do it now look what happened you know and don't 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 do a certain thing on a certain day and people do it anyway and then they get in trouble so I just think it's magnificent I think it's phenomenal that we have this ability to see the future even as the Apostle Paul said in a smoke glass so that you don't see it totally clear but uh, but if you understand the constellations and get somebody who does know you're going to be awful surprised at what you've never been told before yeah so anyway uh, I would suggest people get a reading from you and I guess we'll talk later another time all right Jordan been a pleasure okay let's talk later okay bye-bye